team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any question and we answer it in the video or premiere just like this. And shout out to everybody uh, that's been coming through when we do these videos as premieres. I really appreciate that because it's always super fun because it's all like we're just sitting back. And we all watching together, just like we do uh, with the games on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays and like last year on Wednesdays. But anyway, um, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. If you ever want to be a part of this, uh, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. No more. I, I, I gave too many passes. No more wrong emails will be answered. Send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. But for the patrons, for the patrons, you don't have to worry about sending it on an email. You can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if not, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. Thank you. Like we always say, we, we talk about Ravens literally every single day. We talk Ravens 365 days a year. Even in the off season, we still talking Ravens. Even in the off season. Uh, but I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's get it. First question came from my boy Manuel. He said, what's up Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. Uh, I was watching the rant Ryan Clark had on the Steelers about the new players not respecting the culture that was established in Pittsburgh about playing physical, hard-hitting football every play, and they seem more dedicated to doing TikTok videos or trying to be more appealing to kids by being friendly on social media. Now, with that, I know Ryan Clark, he played in that hard-hitting era of Steelers football, and even before then, uh, before he played, before his tenure with the Steelers, it was even hard-hitting uh, even back, of course, way back in the day. Um, but he, he has to understand this is a much different era. One, it's a much different era. You cannot be nearly as, even if you look at football from 10 years ago, you cannot be nearly as physical uh, in football as you once were. So that's something that a lot of old school football people need to realize. It's just, it's not the same. The NFL doesn't allow it. And they don't want it. So it, it makes it that much harder for defensive play. That's when, when you see a good defense nowadays, you got to give them even more credit. Because it, the game is so much harder nowadays. And as far as, um, and, and if he did say that about them being, wanting to appeal more to kids uh, by being friendly on social media. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, with the TikTok videos, it's people having fun. I know a lot of people got on Juju about that, about all the TikTok videos, called him TikTok boy, TikTok this, TikTok that. He's having fun. He's having fun. And his team, for the most part, they had been successful last year in the regular season. What were they, 11 and 5, I think? I think they were 11 and 5. I know they, they, they started off hot, 11-0, and 0, and then stuff got really bumpy after that. I forgot what their final record ended up being. But, like, it's, it's a different era. And it's just a different era. So when, when players are on social media, social media wasn't around back then. It wasn't around like that back then. So now where social media is, again, like we always say, it's a gift and a curse. It, it allows you to have more access to people, to, to players and whatnot. But then also on the bad, the, the bad side, it allows you to have more access to people and players and whatnot. So it's all, it all depends on how you use it. But if they're using it, interacting with kids, interacting with their fans and whatnot in a positive way, okay, no problem. D no problem. If they're doing it in a negative way, okay, problem. But, and, and then you got, like, you got fans, to, it, it goes both ways. It goes both ways because then you got some fans that'll be like, oh, man, what are, you, what are you doing on TikTok? You need to be in a playbook. Social media is only what people want you to see. They, they could like, for a football player, for example, they on there on doing a TikTok. The, the one TikTok that, that, that uh, Juju did, oh, man, this guy, man. I don't know if y'all saw it. Um, I saw it on Twitter. But there was one TikTok that he did to that, uh, that Lil Nas X and, um, and Jack Harlow song. Where, where Jack Harlow talks about the, the clapping and Juju, like, put the camera on to his back. I'm like, what are you doing, man? But <laughs> this guy. No, you, you don't get no pass for that one. But all the other ones, he, they just having fun, man. So it, it just all depends on how you look at it. Anyway, let's get back to the question. 
He said, uh, that made me look at the Ravens. And what I see is why the general Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Jonathan Ogden, Terrell Suggs, Jamal Lewis, never felt embarrassed about the new Ravens coming in and out of the team. Uh, because the past and culture is respected here. And the players come and play like a Raven because showing what you have on the field grants you more recognition than posting videos on social media. It makes kids and teenagers want to play like you instead of just being a celebrity that plays mediocre and does videos and rants because the water was cold. Uh, it is clear that in Pittsburgh, the culture got lost. And here in Baltimore, it hasn't. For as much as we got players posting on IG and their social media when it's work time, uh, it's work time and they know it. Stay safe. You got my vote. For going to the Pro Bowl as the number one of number one fan media of the Ravens. I, I appreciate you. I don't think they would be selecting me to that Pro Bowl though. Uh but anyway, I mean, I I wouldn't even like say all that. I mean, it's it's just different. They, yeah, and th there are a lot of Ravens players, they they post on social media too. They they right there. Like Lamar posts something like every single day. Hollywood posts something like all the time. They they on there all the time, but the, and those are the only two that I follow. Marlon Humphrey be on he be on Twitter all the time. I don't even follow him, and I see his tweets all the time because he's always on there. But he still goes out there. And this year, this year statistically has been good. But when you watch, it's like oh yeah, Marlon Humphrey been giving up a lot more plays than we used to. Um, but he so my point is that it, he's on social media too, but he also is still a good player. So people are a lot like a, a lot of people get it twisted with football players and Alvin Kamara literally just I, I just saw his tweet about this like he tweeted it last night I just saw it earlier today um, where he talked about y'all y'all think that football is everything it's not it's not e even for football players it's not these dudes have lives they have families and they have fun. It's not like a lot of fans, fans look at football players like, all right, if this player, if on the field, they need to perform, obviously. But then when they're off the field, if they're on social media, if their social media isn't about football, then I don't like them. They're not really dedicated to it. Their social media needs to be only about football and football only. It needs to be showing them working out. It needs to show them studying the playbook. It needs to show them at the gym. It needs to show them on the practice field at the facility. And that's it. No more. No, it's not like that. These dudes can have fun too. It's okay for them to take break. Like I've seen it so like Hollywood is the best example because that's probably the only person that I, I, I watch on Twitch as far as an NFL player. I'm sure there are more NFL players on it too. But anyway, Hollywood, every time I go to his Twitch when he's live, he'll be playing Madden or he'll be playing something else. Uh, my favorites are the Maddens because I don't care for GTA. I don't care for none of them other games like that. But anyway, when he's playing a game, whatever game it may be, he'll be playing. Then somebody will come on there. Hey, how, how are you going to do this weekend? Hey, how many points are you going to get in fantasy, man? Hey, how, how many touchdowns are you guys going to score this weekend, man? And it's like, Give it a break. Give it a break. He's taking a break. You can take it. Let him take a break, too. Because people, they, they, they don't let football players be people. They just want them to be football, 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 football. So it's not even that the, the culture has been lost in Pittsburgh or anything like that. It, they just over there having fun. And this is a new age of football. It's a new age in social media. Ravens players do it too. Steelers players do it too. Players on other teams do it too. It's a new age. Like what? What past Ravens quarterback do you know will be post, posting uh, stories, listening to uh, who? Low Shimmy and Kodak Black and all that. Like, you think was Joe Flacco doing that? Was he posting any stories of him listening to anything? Was Kyle Bowler doing that? Steve McN like. It's a new era. And I mean, new era eight. Like, oh, okay, well, that tied in pretty pretty good. But that's exactly what it's a new era. So people just got to get with it. Next question came from my guy, Lewis. Hey, shout out to my guy. He, he was Tony Paul John's biggest fan. I, I told him. I always, always told him I think it was his cousin or something. It had to be. Anyway, he said, Engraving Man, I'm a little worried. 
Who is going to be the leader in the locker room firing the boys up for this rivalry game? The Steelers are amped up and I could see them smacking us if we don't come correct. Do you think Calais or someone else got it covered or do you share the same concerns? Much love. Keep grinding, brother. Appreciate it, Lewis. I don't share the same concerns at all. Why? For what? The locker room leader? I ain't, I ain't worried about who the locker room leader is. I'm worried about who's going to show up on and be a leader on the field. Um, Calais came over here, L Lamar Jackson, you got Anthony Levine, like they, and Chuck Clark, you, you've had like, as far as like a pregame speech and all that, they've talked about how different guys have spoken to the Ravens before the games this season. <laughs> sometimes the Ravens win those games, sometimes the Ravens lose those games, but they've talked about it with different guys. Um, so, uh, there's been Pernell McPhee as well, there's, there, there's just been so many different people. So, I'm sure they, they will have somebody who is... Willing and ready to step up and speak up uh, to really try to get these boys amped up. And I mean, I'm sure they amped up all, uh, alone already. Cause it's, it's Steelers. Like, this is, this is somebody who you're going to have to play twice. So what better way? What better way to set yourselves up to where if you can get this one on the road, then the next time you play these boys is at the crib. That, oh, that would be so sweet. And then, like, so these boys are already amped up enough, but they got plenty of options of people to amp them up even more. Next question came from my boy Droid209. He said, Engraving my brother, hope all is well with the family. I know 2025 is a long way to go, but what do you think about Jim Harbaugh as OC, as offensive coordinator? Man, it's already enough nepotism on his Raven staff as is. It's already so, no. Uh uh, I mm mm, I no, I no. Oh goodness, I mm mm. That's a no for me from jump. But let's let's finish this question. He said, "I know left field question, but I've been thinking about that scenario uh, for a couple of months now, and I just want to get your thoughts on that subject." All right, uh, no, that that will be a no for me. Um, I just want somebody who I would like to see somebody who's not connected uh, to Hubble. Who, um, just somebody out of way left field. Somebody who may be like a choice of, um, maybe Eric DaCosta or something. Uh, but just not anybody. Because I, I want, uh, I want the person to be held accountable. And I don't want, I don't want, not that I don't want to like a buddy buddy system. Because again, Ravens, they, they, they always show that they family there. Family oriented business organization, blah blah blah, and that's cool. But I just I, I don't want it to be somebody to where I, I just want everybody to be held accountable. That's my point. I want Harbaugh to be held accountable. I want the offensive coordinator to be held accountable. GM held accountable. De defensive coordinator to be held. I want everybody players to be held. I want everybody to be held accountable. And I feel like if it's somebody that Harbs may be buddy buddy with. If they're not doing their job, then he'll just get him a pass. Be, oh, oh no, nah, this is my boy. I, I can't put him on blast like that. And not that you got to put somebody on blast because you, you don't. All that stuff could be talked about behind closed doors, but actions speak louder than words. You know? And we can see when somebody's not being held accountable. We see it. So I just, if it's somebody that's buddy buddy with Harbaugh and that came from a Harbaugh or Andy Reid coaching tree, they ever coached together before, it's nice when you put your boys on. Shout out to hashtag Hood Harbaugh. We love that. But at the same time, it can be a detriment as well. Um, because you, I feel like a lot of the hires, it can be guys who Harbaugh may be comfortable with and be a little too comfortable with, in my opinion. And when you're super comfortable, then you'll be afraid to get out your comfort zone. And then there will be, I feel like your evolving will be, it will be limited on how much you can grow, how much you can evolve, how much you can truly get better. I feel like that would be limited if you just like, I, you know what, I'm going I'm to I'm put my boy on. I know what he can do, but I just feel like that wouldn't truly be getting the best uh, for the team. So I, I would go with a Oh, man, his question ain't even done. But I would go with a no. He said another thing. How would you rank Ravens past running backs? Ray Rice, Jamal Lewis, Alex Collins, Mark Ingram, J.K. Well, those, those three would be all under the rest of them. Um, be under Ray Rice and Jamal Lewis. And there's no offense to any of the three. But Ray Rice and Jamal Lewis, they at the top for sure. Um, as far as between those two. It all depends, man, uh, because with, with both of them, they were both amazing. 
uh, they were both just great running backs. Um, and you could go any, many, many more, really. Uh, for me, uh, I, I say Ray Rice uh, over Jamal Lewis um, because of his involvement in the passing game, too. Uh, it's like one of those things, the more you can do. Now, Jamal Lewis, he could be involved in the passing game, too. You know, they they, they used to do some screens back then. It's crazy, right? Um, but, yeah, I would buy, the, the, buy one little chin hair. I would say Ray Rice, then Jamal Lewis, then as far as the rest of them. It's hard because they're just... They're so different. Um, and he said, the other one, he said, Alex Collins, Mark Ingram, and J.K. Um, I go, uh, based off of what they've done, J.K. only played for a year. Um, Mark Ingram, well, he only had a year here. Alex Collins had like, he had like a year and change, I think. So, hey, I guess they all played for a year here. Based off of what they've done and what my expectations for them as Ravens, well, Obviously, Mark Ingram and Alex Collins ain't ever going to be Ravens again, but they did have positive impacts on them. But I will go, uh, after Ray Rice and Jamal Lewis, I go J.K. Uh, J.K., Mark Ingram, Alex Collins. Even, even that's tough because J.K. is obviously the future. We know he's going to do great things for the Ravens. But Mark Ingram, what he brought to the culture, and for him to just, and I guess maybe this might put him a little over J.K. for now, like temporarily, but for what Mark Ingram did for the culture, and speaking of culture, again, shout out to my guy, Manuel. But what Mark Ingram did for the culture of this Ravens, for that, that, that real shift, because the culture was changing when in 2018, when Lamar took over for Flacco, the culture was changing, but it wasn't changed yet. But 2019, Mark Ingram came through, Earl Thomas came through. <laughs> Earl Thomas came through it. Anyway, that shift, that change was official in 2019, and Mark Ingram was a huge part of that. Huge part of that. And it's like, whenever we think about Mark Ingram, we think about big trust, obviously. We, we think about his impact sort of as, and not, not in a disrespectful way, but sort of as a cheerleader, as a hype man. That, that's what we think about with Mark Ingram, but we can't forget, he had a really good year running the ball, too. So his impact was felt both on and off the field, both in major ways. This dude was huge for the Ravens that season. So for now, um, I, I'll go Ray Rice, Jamal Lewis, Mark Ingram, uh, J.K. and Alex Collins. So ooh, that was a um, good question, a little bonus question, because we, we started talking about that first question, is Jim Harbaugh's offensive coordinator? Mm, uh, no, not for me. Uh, but anyway, he said thank you. Side note, thank you for doing live streams, doing the games. Glad I have a stress brother. <laughs> yeah, we, we all be stressing together with these Ravens. Even though I be like a player two behind, yeah, we, we, we stressing together, man. And he said, my wife also appreciates it. She calls you, De oh, Dev's YouTube friend whenever she see me watching the videos. <laughs> Shout out to you and your wife, man. Appreciate you. Next question came from Amanda. She said, hey, my name is Amanda. I'm a huge fan of the Ravens. I'm 22, so I just started really getting into football these past few years. But ever since Lamar came to be more, I've been obsessed. Uh, your channel alone has helped me understand so many aspects of the game. I, I listen to it all the time. I love being a part of Team Keep It Clean. I went to this past game against the Browns, and it was horrendous. <laughs> Lamar looks like his old self. Oh, I'm praying Lamar looks like his old self against the Steelers. Hey, Amanda, we appreciate it. And we are all hoping the same thing, that Lamar gets it back. And, and he should. He, he should have a nice bounce back game uh, against Pittsburgh. Um, I am still worried about worried about it, though, because uh, this is Raven Steelers. Like, it's not just a random NFC team or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's Ravens and Steelers. So... This is a team like when Ravens and Steelers play each other, the records are cool. Whatever each team's record is, is cool, but it means absolutely nothing. It, it means nothing when they play each other. Nothing. So the Steelers, I think, are like 5-5-1, five, five and one, something like that. I forgot what their record is, but it doesn't mean anything. And Lamar said that, too, the other day. He said he, he looks at their record. It, that don't mean nothing. You know, they're going to come, come to play. Especially because it's Ravens. Like, again, remember 2015 Ravens. These dudes went 5-11. and 11. So they were obviously a uh, pretty bad team, but they were li literally hurt. Everybody was hurt. Every position, everybody was hurt. 
And strangely enough, that's the year that Jimmy Smith played the entire year. One of the years where Jimmy Smith played the entire year. No injuries at all. It's like, wow, that's crazy. Talk about irony. Anyway, um, they swept the Steelers that year. They swept them. Man, Jimmy Smith even had a pick six that, that got called back because somebody was offsides in that game. But Ravens still won. But, um, man, I remember that pick six. That was crazy. But anyway, they, they still swept them. My point with saying all that is to show that the records mean nothing. Ravens won three other games that year. In a total of 16 games. They won three other games. But they won two against the Steelers. So, if that don't show you that the records don't mean nothing, I don't know what will. Uh, but, hey, I, I appreciate you watching the channel. Um, she said it helps you understand so many aspects of the game. Um, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, don't, I don't know what I could have helped you understand, but uh, I'm glad it, it was something. So I, I, I appreciate it. I, um, it's always that that's one of the biggest goals uh, with the channel for people who uh, whether they know a lot about football or they know pretty much nothing about football that they can come through and um, just learn something. This is another one of the reasons why uh, I, I really love this, this questions from subscribers, because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. A whole, whole lot of stuff. Oh, whoa, whoa, it's so much. That's a plethora of information that I just have no clue on. But with questions from subscribers, a lot of y'all have put me on to so many, so much different stuff when it comes not only to Ravens, but just the league, NFL, football, period. And I appreciate y'all for that. Next question came from my boy, Mike Reed. He said, Mike Reed here, can Ed Reed? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Everything is good, my guy. He said, just sitting here scrolling through, scrolling through. We are Ravens Flocks post on Facebook and a pic of Marcus Peters popped up. Oh, man. Hey, be careful because if you, you on Facebook, oh, gosh, that that's a dangerous place to be. That's I, I saw a meme about it before. And, I mean, you could talk about this with any part of Facebook, but when football Facebook, Ravens Facebook, I saw a meme about um, where it was, it was Mufasa and Simba. And he said, uh, everywhere that the light touches, you can go there. But over there, where the light ain't touching, that's Ravens Facebook. <laughs> Don't go there. And for me, I because mm, mm, so, I will... Um, I'll share videos on Facebook and whatnot, but that's about it. Cause it is just I don't interact with pretty much nothing on there. Uh because oh, it's nasty on there. People they just Ooh, they are just they come from way from left field on there and they just toxic, toxic, toxic. It's just like a bunch it's like Facebook is just a bunch of angry people. Who can be the angriest today? And I mean, you could say that about a lot of different social media stuff. Um, but Facebook is like, like Twitter. Twitter has good and bad. Good interactions, bad interactions, and everything in between. Uh, Instagram, um, I mean, it's the same thing everywhere. But Facebook is like the negativity on there. It just outweighs the positivity by far. That's why I, I just share whatever videos we want to share on there. I'm out. That's it. I ain't hanging around for this mess. Anyway, he said, uh, Anthony, A oh, he start automatically started thinking about next season when that, that picture of Marcus Peters popped up. Anthony Averitt has been doing pretty well this season in Marcus Peters' place. Probably could get him on a cheap deal, too. I don't know, man. I don't know about that. He's getting ready to be a free agent. I was just telling somebody the other day, I said, if, if the Ravens want to sign him, they better hope he has a bad game. And they would have, he would have to have a worse game than the Colts game, which was his worst game of the season. And then they would have to sign him right after that bad game. That would be the, the only way that can get him for cheap. The only way. If you, can, if you don't sign him after a really, really bad game, he's gone. He's gone. Because if, the, if he has a really, really bad game, his value, it'll look bad. Even though teams would be like, oh, wait a no, We got to look at the whole picture. And that's what him and his agent should do. They should, if the Ravens tried him like that, they should be like, no, we, we, let's just look at the whole picture. Yeah, he had a bad game, but look at all these other players on defense that had bad games too. But anyway, um, let's keep it going. He said, that got me thinking about having maybe uh, putting Marcus Peters at free safety. 
Look, I um let me, let me let him finish. He said uh he's a he's a ball hawk in the and he's been in the league for years. He gambles a lot anyway, and at free safety he would have more freedom. And you know he loves to read the QB's eyes anyways. LOL. Let's be honest. That's how he gets beat most of the time. He can see the whole field and everything will be in front of him. Brandon Stevens is better at strong safety in my opinion. Hope this wasn't too long. Keep doing your thing. Be blessed. Appreciate you, man. Um, I do this in Madden all the time. Um, when, cause I'll be playing Madden. You got Marlo. You got Marcus Peters. Uh, and then you got whatever other cornerbacks you, you, you got there. Uh, cause when, when Marcus Peters, when he, uh, cause what I do with my cornerbacks, if I really like a cornerback, then, um, and they start to get slower. If your speed is a, is a 90, once your speed gets to being like 91, 90, nah, you, you can't play corner for me no more, my friend. That speed got to be up to play corner for me. But once your speed starts dropping, oh, your, uh, your position is going to change. So I always put Marcus Peters at free safety. And he, he does his thing back there. Um, but with Marcus Peters, I, um, I don't think the Ravens do that. Uh, because with Marcus Peters, with a safety as a ball hawk, oh man, it would be amazing. It would, oh boy, he would feast back. Th like, the, the field would be cut. We would be straight, man. We would be so straight because he would be able to recover. He would be able to cover so much of the field. I, I feel like he, as far as that Roman safety, he would do so good in that. I feel like he would do great at that role. Great. What if we put both him and Jimmy Smith back there? Marcus Peters at free safety, Jimmy Smith at strong safety. Ooh, ooh, if Jimmy Smith could stay healthy now. But the tackling, that would be my only concern, would be the tackling. That would be it. Everything, like this dude, he can read plays as a cornerback, so what? tackling would be my only concern, consistent tackling. Because we know like this dude in the playoff game, he went head up with Derrick Henry. Head up with him. But then, like, there was a couple weeks before that in the Steelers game where he just, he ain't had no part of contact. No part of contact. And it was like, oh, oh what's that about? So that would, my, that would literally be my only concern about Marcus Peters at free safety would be the tackling. Would that be something, and I'm sure a lot of Ravens fans would be like, oh, yeah, for sure. But I was going to say, would that be something that you would be, be willing to take that, that gamble, that risk on his tackling if he was at free safety for me i'd probably say yeah i'd probably say yeah straight up man because he i i call him the the ed reed of cornerbacks he's the ed reed of cornerbacks and if this guy was at safety it would be one of those things where quarterbacks they don't want to try him Again, Mar imagine Marcus Peters. You already see Marcus Peters with just some of the field in front of him, some of the field behind him. But imagine Marcus Peters with everything in front of him and with his the high football IQ we know he has. Man, I, I think this dude would, would thrive at free safety. Yeah, I think he would be amazing. And he said uh, he thinks that Brandon Stevens is better at strong safety, um, in his opinion. Um We'll see. We'll see. Again, we got to remember he's a rookie. We cannot forget that he is a rookie. It's his first year doing this. First year. So that's something that we always got to keep in mind. But I, I, I would love it. Straight up, I, I would love it. I don't think it's going to happen, but never say never. Next question came from my guy Dana. He said, hey, Engraven, it's been a while since my last email, but did you notice how all the pundits are seemingly taking or talking down about the Steelers as if they want the Ravens to lose? Only Acho gave a take that sounded like it was challenging towards the men in purple. Well, hope all is well with you and the fam. Hashtag team keep it clean and hashtag purple city bird game. This, this is one of those games, man, straight up. This is one of those games that if the Ravens lost, I just I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's it's Raven Steelers. We know this game. It it could be ugly. It could be one of them little ugly games. I don't think it could be as ugly as last week. But it, it does have that that possible potential. But this game it could be nasty because these two teams know each other so well. They know each other so well. Steelers they certainly haven't been playing their best football. They certainly haven't. Ravens, they, they haven't been playing their best football, but they've been winning. They've been winning. 
Um, so this this is just this is it's like it's not a trap game because it's only because it's Steelers. It's not a trap game because it's the Steelers, and we know that these dudes they can be this flip floppy team where they just they, they're going by, they scraping by, then all of a sudden click. Oh, they decide to turn it on against the Ravens. Oh boy, here we go. So I I wouldn't really take any offense to that at all. Next question came from my guy Wesley. He said, "What's up, Lil Bill? <laughs> ain't no Lil Bill no more, man. You see all this hair, man. You see all of that. We ain't Lil Bill no more. Anyway, he said I just started watching your uh, videos this year, and I watch every video since I discovered the channel. Uh, thank you for the quality content and consistent drops. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you." Um, because I know some people could see all them videos and be like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm tired of seeing this guy's face. Which I wouldn't be mad at them at all for saying that. I could completely understand. Uh, but now nah, I appreciate you supporting the channel, man. Um, he said, anyways, my question to you is, with the presumably healthy squad next year. <laughs> Ooh, that would be something. Uh, what offseason moves do you think this team needs to make them uh, or to take them to the next level? All right. Uh, well, before I continue, um obviously upgrading that offensive line for sure uh something that we've been talking about just for them preparing for life without ronnie stanley and i, I know he's expected to come back but i think they just really need to move forward like like he's not coming back and you need to have a plan in place as if he weren't coming back because ronnie stanley is a bonus he's a bonus so just so upgrading the offensive line heavily heavily and upgrading that defensive line too um secondary uh there's gonna be some holes there because anthony averitt he could end up being gone marcus peters we'll see what happens with him um only because of salary cap uh deshaun elliott he'll either be gone or i like i i think for him on offense i mean excuse me on defense it's this, this, this Ronnie Stanley situation. They got to prepare for life without Deshaun Elliott. They have, and I think they, ha they already have with Brandon Stevens, who's, again, somebody who they really, really like. Uh, so they're already headed in that direction. But um, if, if they did decide to re-sign him for what would be a cheap deal, then anything you get out of him has to be considered a bonus because, again, same thing as Ronnie Stanley. You got to prepare for life without him. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, at linebacker, they got to figure out what they're going to do at linebacker because Josh Bynes, like you, Josh Bynes has been wonderful for the Ravens and he has been this clutch turnaround guy for the team two out of the last three years. Cause again, 2019 linebacker was looking like a big yikes. They, hey, Josh Bynes, what's up? Big head, like literally big head. Cause he got a big forehead. But anyway, um, they hit him up. He came through, saved the day, him and LJ Fort. 2020 he went to the Bengals he's like oh yeah I'm gonna chill here for a little minute and ooh, big yikes but then 2021 linebacker and looking like a big yikes hey Josh what's up big head again and literally because he got the big forehead but he came through saved the day but you uh Josh Bynes he can't keep being your crutch you got to figure that out so whether Patrick Queen gonna hold down the role whoever whoever else is gonna be what is going to be there at inside linebacker? You guys to figure that out. Pass rushers. Of course, Adafi Away will be in his second year. But Justin Houston, he's not going to be here next year. Calais Campbell. He's been talking about retirement. He'll be gone probably. Brandon Williams, he could be going too. Derek Wolf, he'll be gone as well. His defensive line could have a brand new look. Brand new look. So you got to figure that out too. With the free agency, draft, mix of both. It makes it both. So that's yeah. It's 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 definitely gonna be uh definitely gonna be much different. Uh, but anyway, he said I truly think we need some safety help up top now that L Elliot will most likely be gone. Okay, I probably should have read all this before. Uh, he said Jimmy Smith is getting up there in years. Uh, he's already there actually, and he's gonna be an unrestricted free agent after this season. And Marcus Peters is a year older, coming off a serious injury. Do you think we bulk up that secondary unit? Guys like Xavier Rhodes, Patrick Peterson, Kyle Fuller, and Brashad Breeland all sound like nice things on the free agent market. Thank you. Thanks again for all that you do, and team, keep it clean. Appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, we, we, we already answered all of that.
But yeah, all of those positions, safety, uh, figuring out what's what's gonna happen there. Uh, but yes, the secondary too. Like we said, Anthony Averett, he could be going. Jimmy Smith. Um, yeah, the secondary could look a lot different, a whole lot different. Uh, but again, like like you said at, in the first part of the paragraph, uh, with a presumably healthy squad next year, that's probably the biggest thing. My homie ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.